Was, just to give you an idea how good this guy is away from the ground, away from football, after match, I know you have a bit of an idea, but the guy up here before, a fellow called Mopsy Rantel, of who I've got the utmost in the way of affection and respect, Mopsy is one of those guys who gets first to a party, <laughs> gets in a corner, never leaves it, and is the last to leave. <laughs> it is true, isn't it? <laughs> and if a ram tell can convince us all that this guy, after the 75 grand final weeks afterwards, wiped the floor with him in the beer drinking contest, you can see what a guy you've got. I can show you when he took to four X like a duck to water. So when he didn't make it six X. <laughs> Ron, is there uh, were there times at North when you despaired that Mick wasn't going to uh, maintain his standard, that he was going to drop by the wayside, and then he, he, he forced his way back into the side? No, I think, uh, as Mick uh, himself said a, a while back, as we were at the back, Mick, listening to you, uh, Mick, I love the running where he said I'd never going to race him, what a beauty. <laughs> Michael Francis Nolan, any time, anywhere, Nick uh, did uh, mention the word persistence and it is a quality much admired by coaches and I think in, uh, in society. It's easy if it's easy. It really is. When the guy of Nick's limited abilities in certain areas over which he really had no control in it, that's how he was born. <laughs> <laughs> Nick persisted. And I think if you see a guy persisting, and he's genuine, well, you'll know that he'll make the most of his chances. And I think, although Mick had disappointments along the way, and he has described some towards the finish of his time at North Melbourne, Mick has made the most of what the man above has given him. And there aren't too many people who can say that. The people that do make the most of what they've been given the ones personally, anyway, that I admire the most. And that's why I admire Mick. But no, I never despaired. Mick may have at times, it would have been human to do so, I guess. But as coach and uh, the selector, well, you don't get into the depths of despair about a single player, naturally, as much as the player himself, because there are 50 players at a footy club that you've got to be uh, looking at and evaluating. So I guess I didn't uh, worry too much about Mick. And he helped himself a lot by persisting and whether he was in the reserves or not, he gave it everything he had. And that's the mark of a good club man, which is also uh, a, a favourite thing with coaches. And I'm tremendously pleased that Mick has become a successful coach. Not just because he's won a premiership, because there are quite a few good coaches uh, in the history of the game who haven't won premierships. But I'm sure Mick has the ability to get a lot out of people. And that's the mark of a good coach. down on something that I figured who said it, uh, oh, it might have been Gary Cable himself, where he said he had a very close relationship with Mick in the hand, and that's quite okay, that's the way it should be with Ruckman and Rovers, but when they walk off the ground hand in hand, <laughs> we first noticed that in 1980, and Nick was gone in 81. <laughs> no, that's not true. In fact, I reckon if one of those, <clears throat> you know, those people touched Mick, 
wouldn't it be worthwhile getting on film? <laughs> it's really a fantastic sight. Although I think Mick's uh, broadened out a bit, and I guess a lot of that is due to his uh, playing days at North Melbourne, because being in successful sides in, in the big time in any popular sport in Australia naturally gives you experiences on, which enable you to expand. And I think the same goes for Nettie too. I think they've been a great team, Mick and Nettie, and it's essential for a guy who's going to stay in the game a long while to have uh, a great backstop at home. It isn't easy for the girls. It really isn't. And they've got to have support. And I'm, I know that uh, Mick received tremendous support at home. That's absolutely essential. Nick asked me about becoming a coach and I reminded him of the old story. Coaches have got to have class. When they run you out of town, you've got to look as though you're leading the parade. <laughs> and I told Nick about that teamwork one. You've heard that Teamwork story, it's a tremendous football story. It doesn't emanate a good iron coach had just lost seven games on the trot. So he called his team together for a meeting to thrash out the problem of how to win the next one. He said, we have a problem, gentlemen, we've lost seven in a row. It's my job as coach to produce the answer to this problem. I have, he said. Our problem is teamwork. We have none. Why haven't we got teamwork? He said, I've got the answer to that too. The answer is because you black guys, you won't throw it to you white guys, and you white guys, guys won't kick it to you black guys. That's why, he said, from now on, there ain't going to be any blacks. And there ain't going to be any whites. Why? Because we're all going to be green. <laughs> We all think green, the sky's green, the floor's green, you're green, I'm green, the bus we're going to hop on to in a moment for the next game is green, everything's green, we all think green. Right? Right, coach, they said. Okay. And when you get on the bus, I want you dark green guys to get down the back and you light green <laughs> Nick uh, rang me uh, last year and he said, Coach, you probably don't realise that even after 17 years of the caper, don't realise what I've just discovered. And I said, what have you discovered? He said, I said, uh, he said, it's the secret of coaching. Well, my ideas immediately expanded to their fullest limit. <coughs> I said, what is the secret of coaching, Mick? And Mick said, the secret is to keep the five guys who hate you away from the five guys who are undecided. <laughs> well, and, uh, I'm sure everyone here appreciates the, uh, the effort you've put into uh, to come here this evening. You're a very busy man, not only with the football club, but with your business interests. On behalf of the main football club, I'd like to present you with this memento of this evening. You're not allowed to touch that until after May and win the Premiership at least. You might come back and help Nick drink it. Ron Barassi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 